Hey y'all, let's take a look at uh, parabolas. This is going to take a little bit longer, so buckle up. We'll try to knock through it as fast as we can, though, with, but with understanding things. But let's look back at the definition of a quadratic equation. Um, if you recall, it looks like this, you know, x squared plus 3x, I don't know, minus 7 equals 0, or whatever. It's just one variable, uh, and it has the, the degree is 2. You can't graph this because it has one variable. Like we've done things before, we had an x and a y where you, you can graph a line. It has two variables because you put something in for x and you get something for y and there's your point. And you graph all those points together and there's your line. So you can't graph that and there's nothing to put in and get something else for it. But, however, we can go ahead and write quadratic equations like this, like the one we just did a minute ago, and like that with two unknowns. And the way we do that is to just replace this with a y. We can just put a stick of y here. Or we can remember that you can also think of this as f of x. Either one of those is fine. Okay, so let's say we're going to take the first equation, <clears throat> which is this: y is equal to x squared plus 4x plus 4. And again, this is if you just kind of don't pay attention to the y. If you looked at this, this is a quadratic equation. If you just had a zero there or something like that. <clears throat> okay, so let's just stick in some points. Don't forget, you can always stick in points to graph something. Okay, if x is zero. Then we have 0 squared plus 4 times 0, which is 0 plus 0 plus 4, and there's 0 and 4. So 0, and then 1, 2, 3, 4, and that's one point right there. Okay, So 2, that's going to be 2 squared, or 4, plus 4 times 2, that's 8. So we have 4 plus 8 is 12, plus 4 is 16. So 2, we're way up here, like, you know, we're talking about like up, up here, way up there somewhere. Okay. If it's 3, then we have, you know, <clears throat> 3 squared, 9 plus 4 times 12, 21 plus, that's 25. Oh, you're thinking like, oh, 1, 2, 3, whoa, that's way on up there anyway. Negative 2, uh, well, we'll, we won't get, we'll wait on that. But let's look at the second one here. Same thing we could look at and uh, graph this parabola. Let's just try it again. If x is 0, then we have y is going to be negative 3. So there's 1, like there. If it's 2, then the opposite of 2 squared, which is negative 4, right? Uh, excuse me, yeah, that would be negative 4. And then plus 8 minus 3, it's kind of interesting. So that's 4 minus 3 is 1. So if a 2, you got a 1 there, all right? And if it's a 3, the opposite of 3 squared is negative 9. And then plus 12... Okay, that gives you 3. Minus 3 is 0, so 3 and 0. So 1, 2, 3, and then doink down here. And uh, negative 2, well, negative 2 squared is 4. That's going to be opposite of 4. Then plus 4 times negative 2, that's going to be negative uh, 8. That's negative, and then that's going to be negative 15. So we're getting all kind of over the place. So negative 2, and then negative 15. We got all the way down here, and anyway. We'll graph one of these more accurately in just a minute, but this is called a parabola. When you graph, you know, a line, that's y equals 3x plus 5 or whatever, that's just a line. Uh, both of those, x and a y, are of the first degree. They're, the, you know, the uh, exponent is value is 1. A parabola is simply a, uh, a y is equal to, and that's a, a quadratic uh, equa uh, equation. So it has an x squared, it has an x, and it has a constant, all right? Write this down. There are three characteristics of parabolas. You want to make sure you know this because this will help you graph parabolas. And <clears throat> you'll get to a point where you don't even have to even do this at all. Plot points. I mean, we don't do that anyway, right? So we'll see something about this in a second. But three characteristics. Pause and copy. Number one, they have an axis of symmetry. An axis of symmetry is basically... A point at which the parabola, which will look like this, this is a parabola, it'll look like this, or it'll look like this. All right? They have an axis of symmetry. The axis of symmetry is right here where you go, oh, look, it splits it right down the middle, or it splits it right down the middle right here, and there's a certain way you can figure out what that is. Number two, they have a vertex. Well, this is the vertex on the one going up. And this is the vertex of one going down. And they either go up or they go down, one of those two. And we'll see how you can tell in just a minute. All right, number three, they have a y-intercept. In other words, where does this line cross the y-axis? There's a certain number. And if you find that number, let's say it's right here. We found the number is right there. 
and you don't know anything about the rest of the <coughs> parabola, well, if you know the axis of symmetry, you can go ahead and go, oh, if this is 3 over, then the other one will also be 3 over. You can just put, you know, plot the point. We'll do this in just a few minutes, all right? Okay, well, you tell me, what do we know about this line, and uh, what's it look like? Okay, with two things you know about this, right? What's the y-intercept? It's negative 4, right? So you can tell you just by looking at this, 1, 2, 3, 4, and you have a point right there, all right? The second thing you know, what does the 2 tell you? The slope, right? So it's 2 over 1, and it's going to be going positive, right, up and to the right. So 2 up, 1 over. 2 up, 1 over, and then, you know, there's your line. All right? But you can do the same thing with parameters. You can figure out more about this, okay? Let's look at this. <clears throat> this is a perfect example to write in your notes really neatly so you can follow this and do all these parabolas from the, for the rest of the year based on this model, and it'll become second nature to you. Okay, look at that equation. Copy it down, you know, pause and copy if you need to. So y is equal to positive, and you don't have to put the positive out there, you just assume it is, in parentheses, x minus 3 squared minus 5, all right? So if we were to go ahead and do the x minus 3 squared and multiply it out, we would get, you know, x squared minus 6x plus 9, then a minus 5, then we'd be, oh, 9 minus 5 is plus 4, then we could do that, okay? All right, let's look at a few things we know about this. <clears throat> the x is positive. The x is positive. In other words, this x right here is positive. So it opens upward. In other words, your parabola will look like this and not the upside down one we saw on the last slide. The second thing is that the axis of symmetry is x equals positive 3, positive 3, which is the opposite of what in this equation? Obviously, negative 3, right? So the axis of symmetry, in other words, well, here is going to be at the point x equals positive 3. So if you had some kind of a, you know, your graph would be over here. You go, ah, there it is, okay? That is the opposite of this. Okay, so in other words, if we have an equation that said y equals x plus 7 squared minus 5, you would go, oh, the axis of symmetry is negative 7. So you'd be over here, Negative 7, x is negative 7, yoink, there's your axis of symmetry. You could, you could draw that little dotty one and then like that and draw the, the actual parabola. Okay, the last thing is the y-coordinate of the vertex. The y-coordinate of the vertex, in other words, how up and down it goes, is negative 5. So this point right here, the very, very lowest part of the graph drawing will be negative 5. And that's the lowest you're ever going to get. Okay, all right. So let's look at it. Um, one last, I'm sorry, I forgot, the y-intercept. Uh, how, how do we find the y-intercept? If we had this, for example, oh, y equals 2x minus 4, what's the y-intercept? Negative 4, right? Because we put a 0 in there for x. We can just see this automatically. Oh, yeah, if, if I put an x or a 0 for x, <clears throat> the y-intercept is going to be negative 4. Got it. You can look at that. With a parabola, you're going to have to actually put in a value for x of 0 and see what you get. So let's do that. 0 minus 3 is just negative 3, right? Negative 3 squared is 9. 9 minus 5 is 4. That's your y-intercept. There you go. So in other words, if you're drawing this, and you have a, you know, here's your graph, and you're drawing this, you go, oh, the y-intercept is, you know, whatever it looks like, I don't know. You can go, oh, there it is right there. I know the y-intercept is 4 right here. It's going to be positive 4. There you go. It'll help you draw this. You do want to get graph paper and use that. Use graph paper for this lesson and uh, all the ones afterwards. Okay, so let's graph this thing. All right, well, it opens upward. We know that because of this. All right, you won't always see that positive. In fact, you never will. All right, we got that. The axis of symmetry is x is equal to positive 3. So x is 1, 2, 3. So in other words, this is your axis of symmetry. This is where... Uh, you know, this imaginary line will split the parabola right in the middle with mirror halves. The y-coordinate of the vertex is negative 5. So, in other words, the very lowest part this is going to be is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. There we go. And that's what it's going to look like. Negative 5. Y is negative 5. Down 5. Okay. And the vertex will be right in the middle of that axis of symmetry, of course, because the the rest of it's going to go like this and go like that and match on both sides. The y-intercept itself is 4 because we figured if x is 0, then y is going to be 4, right? So x is 0, 0 minus 3 is negative 3. 
Squared is nine, nine minus five is four, so we can go like this, one, two, three, four, okay? And look at this. Since we know this is symmetrical around this, we can go, okay, this is one, two, three away from the axis of symmetry. So we can go, oh good, one, two, three. There's another point right here we can say uh, works. By the way, that point is six, one, two, three, four, six and four, right? Well, let's try an X value of six. We have six minus three is three. Three squared is nine. Nine minus five is four. Gee, it works, okay? So we know that. So we don't have to draw an exact drawing and plot tons of points. We just need to find this about the parabola, those facts about it, based on the equation, and then kind of try to draw it the best we ugh, horribly can here, okay? Yeah. Okay, so it looks something like this. And there you go. That's, you don't have to draw it perfectly, like mine is. Okay, there you go. All right, let's try another one. Things we know about this parabola. So let's go ahead and copy and make another example so you can check back and look at these two examples to it'll help you graph your parabolas. Y equals negative X plus four squared plus three. Okay, well, a couple of things. Same kind of stuff, right? The X is negative, so it opens how? Remember the old one went like this, because that was positive. This opens downward, so it's going to look like this instead, because that is negative. Second thing, the axis of symmetry is X equals, <clears throat> you tell me, it's the opposite of what? This number, right? So that's going to be x equals negative 4. We good? Okay. Third thing, the y-coordinate of the vertex. Well, you tell me. Y-coordinate of the vertex is going to be, and the last one, the y-coordinate of the vertex is negative 5, right? Well, the y-coordinate of the vertex is going to be positive 3. You got it. Okay? And that last number. All right? The last thing is the y-intercept. And the way we find the y-intercept is to make x equal to zero, okay? So let's do it. Zero plus four is four. Four squared is 16, right? But not 16 at the very end. It's gonna be the opposite of 16. Well, negative 16 plus three is negative 13. Okay, that's our y-intercept, okay? So that thing's gonna be pointing down. Let's go ahead and draw it. <coughs> we know it opens downward first off, okay? The axis of symmetry is x equals negative 4. Okay, so we got 1, 2, 3, 4. And do, 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 do. we can draw our little axis of symmetry. And there she blows. Okay, the y-coordinate of the vertex is positive 3. So y is equal to positive 3. So we have 1, 2, 3. That's your vertex, right? Like the, the, the corner or whatever you want to call it. 1, 2, 3. I'll just draw it like that. Okay. But don't forget this opens downward, okay? The y-intercept is going to be negative 13. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, this is 10. Okay, so I'll just go down 1, 2, 3 more like this. Pretend that's negative 13, okay? Oops. I'll just go down 3. So there's negative 13 right there. We'll see. Okay, well, immediately you know, since this is 1, 2, 3, 4 away, you need to go 1, 2, 3, 4 away this way and kind of match it up here and go like that, okay? So that's what your parabola looks like, okay? So if you get, you know, your uh, um, you know, equation looking like this, you can look at different parts of it and tell what, how to draw it without having to plot millions of points to figure out how it goes, okay? Okay, we'll just go to the next one then, okay? But we're, now this is interesting. We're going to have to complete the square on this one. Complete the square. Remember that? Completing the square? <laughs> All right, I'll, let's refresh our memory about what to complete the, what completing the square is. Remember how that goes? In other words, if you had x squared plus 6x, what should this be so you could complete the square? You would take half of this number, right? 3, then square it, and there you go. And you could go, oh, I got it. That's x plus 3 squared. Boom. Or if you had x squared minus, I don't know, um, let's say 10x. What belongs here? You'd go, what's half of negative 10? Negative 5. Negative 5 squared is plus, plus 25. Then you could write that. You could say, oh, that's going to be x minus 5 squared. Okay. And if you realize that what, the things we've graphed so far have an x blah, blah, blah squared and then something else in there, that's what we're aiming at. That's what we're aiming at to do. We're aiming to make this hunk of junk in parentheses just like the other ones are. 
All right, so let's actually work on that. This is uh, not easy to do, but I think you'll get the idea pretty soon. Okay, really quickly. We have x squared, we have minus four. Okay, well, what does this number, the two, need to be? What's it need to be? It needs to be a four, right? Because half of negative four is negative two. Negative two squared is four. So this needs to add, we need to add two on this side. But we don't just go around adding two to one side of an equation, right? If we're gonna add two, we can also add two to this side, but we don't wanna mess up the y. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add two, then we're gonna subtract two. And that, you might say, what in the world was the point of that? Well, the point is, so we can get this. We can clump all this stuff together, all right? So we're not gonna, we're gonna we can, I'll just do an extra step for you. Y is equal to x squared minus four x plus four and then minus two. We haven't changed anything. We've just added two and subtracted two and kind of put this inside the parentheses. Well, you can see from this inside here, you know how we can write this instead of writing, you know, x squared minus four x plus. We're gonna write x minus two squared and then we're gonna put a minus two on the outside. Now, if you notice, that looks a lot like the last couple of pages, right? We have y, we have y. We have equals x blah, blah, blah squared. We have x squared, then some number at the end. Well, there's a number at the end. Boom, we're ready. Does that make sense? Okay. So things we know about this, let's talk about it. We'll just call it ed. A lot of parabolas are named ed. Okay. The x is positive. So this parabola opens like that. It looks like this somehow. All right. The axis of symmetry is going to be x equals, you tell me. What is it? What's the opposite of negative two? It's going to be positive two, right? All right. So the third thing is the, oh, okay. So x is going to be positive two. We said that. All right. The third thing is the y-coordinate of the vertex. The y-coordinate of the vertex. Well, what other number are we going to do here? Okay, it'll be negative two, right? And you tell me what the y-intercept would be. We just need to figure out what x, if x is zero, what's the rest of it, okay? So let's do it. x is zero, well, zero minus two is negative two, negative two squared is four, four minus two is two. And there we go, okay? So we can graph this now. So we know it opens up. The axis of symmetry is positive two, so we go x is two, one, two, then boom, 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 all the way down like this. That's going to be your split in the middle point, okay? The y-coordinate of the vertex is negative 2. So the lowest this thing gets is down here at negative 2 like that. Oops, always do that. There you go, okay? The y-intercept will be positive 2. So we know that this thing is going to cut the y-axis right there. Well, if we know it's, you know, from this axis of symmetry, this thing is 2 over right there, we also know it's 2 over right there. So there we go. So we can kind of like start drawing this thing like, like that, and it looks somewhat like that. And yours, you know, if, you're, you're, if yours are close to what the book has, that's fine. Don't worry about it. Okay, that's about as well as I've ever drawn a parabola in my entire life. So anyway, okay. All right, let's try another one. We're going to complete this square and uh, graph this thing. Now, this is kind of weird. Look what's different about this one. Negative x, right? Okay, we can deal with it. We're good. Okay, let's do the same thing then. Let's, let's do something first, though. Let's pull this uh, negative out of here and then see what we have left. We got x squared, we got minus 2x, right? And we got a minus 2. Okay. And I'll just go and I'll hold off for a second, ending that up. And I'll just put this in different colors so you can see what's going on. Okay. Well, you can tell what this number should be, right? I mean, this number is negative 2x. So half of negative 2, negative 1. Negative 1 squared is one, right? We don't have a one here where it should be, but it's a negative two. So what do we need to add to this negative two to get one? Three, right? We're adding three. Okay. Now you might say, okay, I'm going to subtract three now that I've added three, like we did on the last one. Remember that one? We went, oh, you know, I added two here. Now I subtract two to, to uh, you know, fix it up. Well, on this one, it's going to be a little different because you are not actually adding three to this right side of the equation. You know why? because of this right here. That's gonna make it, the it's gonna make it, you're adding actually negative three because it's the minus three. So to undo that, you're gonna to have to go to the very end of this thing, like that, okay. And you know how to rewrite this thing in the middle, right? It's really x squared minus two x plus one, okay? Well, let's go ahead and write that as a square. So minus, 
and that will be x minus 1 squared, and then minus 3. Now we're in good shape. We're in business. We can look at this. We're get, you're probably getting a little better about going, oh, it opens this way, and it does this, and does that. So let's go ahead and actually uh, do this. This is Anne. Now let me make sure I've got this right. Hold on a second. Minus 2 plus a 3. I'm adding 3 to that. This gives me a 1. So I'm actually adding... Oh, wait a second. I goofed up. <laughs> okay. Yeah, my, my fault. If I explain that wrong, my bad. What you're actually adding is a negative 3. That's my bad. You're adding a negative 3. Okay, so to undo the negative 3, you're probably going throwing things at the screen. But anyway, you're actually adding... A negative 3 here, which means you have to undo this by adding 3 at the very end, not subtracting. Okay, sorry, that was Microsoft Windows. That was their fault. Okay. My, the previous administration's fault. Anyway, okay. We're naming this one Anne. What do we know about Anne? You tell me. Does How does it open? This tells you what? It's going to open upside down, like that. Okay, next, the axis of symmetry is x equals plus one, right? The opposite of this thing. Okay, well, let's just do it. The axis of symmetry is x equals positive one. Well, there's our axis of symmetry. There it is. Just like that. It just goes right there at positive one. Okay, third thing, the y-coordinate of the vertex, you tell me. Positive three, right? Okay, so it opens down. The y-coordinate is one. Excuse me, one, two, ah, one, two, three. All right, so there's my point. That's the highest point's going to be. It's going to be pointing down, okay? The y-intercept, you just stick, you know, a zero in there for x. So zero minus one is negative one. Negative one times negative one is one. But the opposite of one, since the negative gets attached to it. So negative one plus three is two. So the y-intercept is two. One, two is what it looks like there, which tells you immediately, okay, well, if it's over one, from the, the uh, axis of symmetry, it's over one on this side of the axis of symmetry, and it looks like that. And there you go, and that's your graph. Okay, all right, we got one more. See if you can, you know, pause this and go ahead yourselves, and it's a little sticky with that negative at the beginning, but pull that negative out of there, tell me what's left, then you complete the square and see how far you can get. Okay, so pause it, and we'll come back in a second. All right, well, let's see what you've done here. Um, let's first get that negative out of there so it makes everything nice and easy to work with in the middle. So x squared, that'll be plus 6x and plus an 8. And okay, and we'll deal with stuff right here. Okay, well, we don't want uh, an 8 here. We want half of the positive 6, which is 3, squared, which will be 9. So we have 8, so let's just go ahead and put a plus 1, okay? Since we are adding the plus 1, the minus outside means we're actually adding a negative 1. So to balance it out, we need to go boop, plus 1 here. All right. So we'll rewrite this as y equals negative and then something squared. And that's going to be plus x plus 3, right? x plus 3 squared equals x squared plus 6x plus 9. Okay. And then plus 1. Now our equation looks like a nice parabola that we come to to know and to love and to cherish. Okay, now we got stuff about it we can talk about. We're going to name this one Ty. Okay, all right. First off, you tell me. It opens how? Down, right? The negative. There we go. Okay, all right. The axis of symmetry, x is equal to negative 3. Absolutely. All right, let's go ahead and do it. x is negative 3. 1, 2, Three negative. So there it is. That's what our axis of symmetry looks like. So there it cuts it in the middle. All right. So the y coordinate of the vertex is going to be positive one, that number right there. So the vertex looks is positive one, yoop, right there. Oops. There it is. That's, the, that's positive one up on the y axis. That's the highest it's going to be. Everything else is going to be lower than this. Okay. The actual y-intercept itself means we have to go x equals, equals 0. So 0 plus 3 is 3. 3 squared is 9. Okay, but not 9, but negative 9. Negative 9 plus 1 is negative 8. So the y-intercept is actually way down here 
at negative 8. Well, if it's 1, 2, 3 over, well then 1, 2, it's going to be 3 over exactly in the middle because this is the axis of symmetry. And that goes down. And, oh, I missed that completely. Make that a little bigger. There we go. Perfect. Okay. All right. And that's uh, our third kind of graph about parabolas. So go ahead and flip over to your uh, practice problem in your book. Give A a whirl and pause it. We'll come back and look at it together, okay? Okay, well, let's take a look what we got here. We do not like the way this looks as it is now. We don't want this to be a 3. Okay, we want it to be a what? Half of negative 2 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. We don't have 1, we have a 3. Well, to get to 1, we're going to have to, you know, subtract 2, right? To get out of there, to make this into a 1. Well, if we subtract 2 on the inside, we've got to add 2, right? To make things even. So we have this as our new equation. y equals x squared minus 2x plus 1, and then plus 2, right? Now, we don't want to keep this this way. We're going to, we want to keep it this way, okay? We have x minus 1 squared plus 2. Okay, first off, does it open up or down? Up, right? This is positive right here, okay? Second, what is the, let's go back if you want a refresher, What's the axis of symmetry? What number tells us? This right here, the opposite of that. Okay, so that'll be positive 1. So we have doot, 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 all the way. X is equal to 1. There it is. Okay, we got that. All right. And you tell me what is the Y coordinate of the vertex. Remember what number that is? This one here. Okay, so the Y coordinate of the vertex is Y is 2. So there it is right there. Okay. There she blows, all right? Now we need to figure out, so we know this is going to be, uh, well, that's a mistake. That, that was my bad, my bad, my bad. This looks like this. <laughs> Got a little ahead of myself here, so here we go. Okay, so that will be up to right there. Okay, the last question is, what is the y-intercept itself, which means we're going to have to put x is equal to 0. So 0 minus 1 is negative 1. Negative 1 squared is 1. 1 plus 2 is 3. So your y-intercept is 1, 2, 3. And if this is over 1 from the axis of symmetry, that means the other coordinate will be right here over 1, and it will look like this. There you go. Okay, and that's good. All right, try B, pause it, and come back. We'll do that together. Okay, let's take a look. Y equals negative. I'm going to pull this out. X squared will be plus 4X and then a plus 3. And then we'll fig figure out the rest of this jazz in a second here. Okay, so we don't want 3, right? We want something else. Well, half of 4 is 2. 2 squared is 4. Okay, we have 3. We just need to add 1, right, inside here. If, we, if we're adding 1 inside this, this get, that gets, you know, affected by the negative, that means we're actually subtracting 1. So to undo the subtracting of 1, we have to add 1 out there, okay? And again, we write the uh, new equation with a minus, and we have an x, and we have a plus 2 squared, and then a plus 1, okay? First off, does it open up or down? Down. I'm assuming you said, wait, what did you say? No, not up. Oh, yes, down. Okay, I misunderstood. Okay, down, yes. Down is good. It goes down, so it looks like that, all right? Well, the axis of symmetry is going to be x equals negative 2, right? So we can actually draw that if you want. Just there we go, and there we go. Okay, this number is going to be the very highest point, the vertex. y is equal to positive 1. So this is it. The y goes up 1. That's going to be your vertex, and it's going to go down on both sides, okay? The last thing is the y-intercept. We're going to have to make, you know, we're going to have to make x equal to 0. So if x is 0, 0 plus 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4, right? But negative 4, right? So negative 4 plus 1 is negative 3. That is your y-intercept. y is equal to negative 3, so 1, 2, 3. All right, once you know that and you know it's going down, you can go down again and go, it's 2 over that way. It's going to be 2 over this way exactly right here. And there you go. Oh, I missed that. There, draw a nice little circle there for you. Okay. And that's what your parabola looks like. Ooh, 
No, that was a long lesson, but use those examples that you've made for yourself uh, to show how to do the rest of these. And uh, when you come to some college class or whatever you come across and we're doing parabolas, these won't be any big deal to you. Okay, see you guys next time.